And I want to thank our distinguished witnesses uh, for being here as we examine a critical relationship uh, that is becoming increasingly challenging and uh, unfortunately confrontational and one that surely deserves more attention. The nature of the United States relationship with the People's Republic of China has arguably entered a new era. Since President Xi assumed the uh, leadership role in China, U.S.-China affairs have steadily undergone a fundamental transformation. In this new era, the PRC is more assertive and indeed aggressive on an entire range of issues covering the political, security, and socioeconomic spectrums. Today, we hope to learn more about China's new leadership team and discuss what we can do as a nation to ensure that America's interests are best represented overseas. I believe that the U.S.-China relationship is one of our most important, given what is at stake. And when we discuss what exactly is at stake, such as peace and security across the Taiwan Strait and freedom of navigation and movement in the East China and South China Seas, we see that not enough attention is being given to this critical relationship. Just a few months ago, the debate focused on whether the administration's pivot to Asia was adequately resourced. Today, I believe that this pivot is stuttering. When it comes to the Asia-Pacific region, the conversation is focused on China, and this includes China's aggressive foray into the South China Seas. It's clear that the administration is struggling to find a way to better direct America's resources toward the Asia-Pacific and find a way to manage the growth of maritime territorial disputes. As a result, with this void, we see that China is shifting its assertiveness in the security arena and is now focusing it on American businesses operating in that country. According to a recent article in the New York Times, quote, foreign companies in a range of industries, including automobiles, technology, pharmaceuticals, and food packaging, have faced increased scrutiny, including raids and allegations of unfair practices, unquote. The article goes on to say that the heightened attention against foreign country, companies, including many American firms, comes at a time when Beijing is looking for ways to help its homegrown industries. I find this behavior particularly troubling given that it violates China's own commitments to the World Trade Organization. China's increasing level of enforcement activity comes from the implementation of its anti-monopoly law which was drafted over a period of 10 years in consultation with authorities in the U.S. government and the European Union. The law even draws from elements of both U.S. and EU competition laws. But now it's being used to target U.S. and European companies. During the U.S.-China Security and Economic Dialogue held this past July, China committed to using its monopoly laws to promote consumer welfare and not its domestic companies or industries. This is not what we are seeing happening. China's National Development and Reform Commission, the organization responsible for reviewing monopoly activities, abuse of dominance and the abuse of administrative power involving pricing, asserts that the foreign companies only account for 10 percent of anti-monopoly cases. However, this can't be justified and the situation seems anything but fair, objective, transparent, or non-discriminatory. Earlier this month, the U.S.-China Business Council reported that 86 percent of its member companies are concerned about China's evolving anti-monopoly regime. Among the many reasons are broader concerns about how China will use this law to protect domestic industry, how it will affect the value of intellectual property, and whether it will be used to force lower prices rather than let the market decide. As a result, in addition to already growing concerns about China cyber hacking uh, offensives, for example, warming relations with Russia, and aggressive incursion upon the territories claimed by neighboring nations, the implications of China's anti-monopoly investigations could be quite serious. In my congressional district in southwestern Ohio, uh, which includes most of the city of Cincinnati, a significant number of businesses count on the Chinese market for an important part of their annual sales. Small businesses and large businesses alike export to China exports to China have helped many firms grow and prosper and hire American workers. However, as reports about China's anti-monopoly investigations mount, so do worries about the unfair treatment of U.S. businesses in that country. Looking ahead, it's vital that we gain a better understanding of the Chinese leadership and its political, security, and socioeconomic goals. 
It's also critical for us to determine a way forward for effectively engaging with various stakeholders in China so that the U.S. businesses have a clear understanding about what this means for their future activities in China. What is at stake in this new era of U.S.-China relations is extremely important, and now is the time to give it the attention it deserves. I look forward to the testimonies of the uh, witnesses here this afternoon, and I'd now like to recognize the ranking member of this subcommittee, uh, uh, Eni Filiamovegi from American uh, Samoa.